the timing is absolutely crucial. If I was here in the wet season, I'd be sitting underwater, which is precisely why we come now in the dry season. Not only is the river accessible, but also the fact that it's down about 30 foot, the fish are more confined. The problem is, is that the weather actually is changing. There's the wind blowing, we had rain last night, and there's real concern at the moment that if, if there's any more rain, the tracks leading in here are, are going to become impassable, so everyone's keeping an eye on the weather. If there is signs of things turning bad, we're just going to have to throw everything in the vehicles and get out of here, and that will be a premature end to my mission. With a big storm approaching, the research team has no choice but to beat a retreat. Yet it seems there is still a glimmer of hope. To stay one step ahead of the weather, we head back to Telegraph Pool. This is my last chance to catch the monster that I've waited nearly 20 years to see. While Dave and his team prepare for another night of trapping, I return, superstitiously perhaps, to the exact spot where I release the baby sawfish. Maybe this is where my prayers will finally be answered. Fitzroy River in Australia, I'm hooked into a beast that means business. Good size, good size. It's coming in quite close, it's already quite icky. I'm gonna get all these rocks in here. I'm gonna need someone to grab it. I think that's ready, it's ready, I think. Oh, it's a sawfish, it's a sawfish. At last, the animal that's been swimming around on my head for nearly 20 years. Yeah. Here we go, my first sawfish. Look at this for a beast. This thing, nearly seven foot long, it's bigger than I am. And that rostrum on there, that's a foot and a half long. It's got 39 of those teeth. Each one is about an inch long, wickedly sharp. You've got a huge dorsal fin, a very big second dorsal fin, very big tail, and they anchor the body. And when the body flexes, it's this head and this rostrum that really scythe from side to side. It's about to tense. We're about to have a splash. Yeah, here we go. Yeah. This journey began almost 20 years ago. In the heart of the Amazon, I stood staring at a vicious looking weapon and wondered if I'd ever see its owner in the flesh. Now, in a remote river in Australia, I've finally got my hands on a live sawfish. So I hold that down. And the scientists, meanwhile, think they've figured out why these creatures come into fresh water. It's flat on the rostrum. Dave's latest measurements show that they're using the Fitzroy as a nursery. Acoustic tag going in here. Despite all the predators, it's still safer here than in the sea. Only when they reach eight or nine feet long do sawfish leave the river. As an adult living in salt water, this fish could one day become a 20-foot giant. But I came here to find out if this fish is also a monster in terms of deed. Now, there's no doubt that that fearsome toothed rostrum is potentially a lethal weapon, and it's certainly been used as such in the hands of humans. 
but I can find just no instance at all of this fish having attacked a human being willfully. In other words, its monstrous appearance is not matched by its behaviour. Certainly if you're a small fish, this thing is a deadly weapon, but from the human point of view, the sawfish is the archetypal gentle giant. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like the River Monsters page.